like most Americans think that a farm has a tractor, few animals, green grass and cows, and a big field growing corn, and an old man doing it. I think it's a very bucolic, beautiful, probably somewhat traditional picture, and they don't really think about what it's like today in American agriculture. We at Riverview Farms, we manage the land, we take care of the soil and the animals so that future generations will have a real farm to come to, just taking care of the soil and managing it like, you know, Mother Nature wants to have it managed so the animals help keep the, the land up and we utilize their manure to fertilize the crops. So ours is kind of a closed loop system. And that's a good kind of agriculture, some different crops. The farmer is producing the crops for their animals, but the waste can be used on the land. That's how agriculture was for many, many decades. So we knew that organics was taking off. So we thought, well, why don't we just move back to the farm and see if we can't do something, change how we market things, start growing vegetables, bring the animals back. But we were fortunate to definitely start at a time when people were really paying attention to what they're eating and, and it's still growing. That movement's still growing. It is really a shame to see a more mid-size and smaller farms go out of business because agriculture is the lifeblood of rural communities. In the 1980s, we could say that about a third of a dollar for food production went to farmers. Today it's more like 13 cents. We've had a number of policy decisions that have been made. We greatly weakened antitrust laws. Uh, in the early 1980s. And that meant that there's a lot more consolidation. And so those companies that were getting larger had a lot more money to spend in uh, influencing agriculture policy. You know, we have about 20 giant companies that control most of the products that Americans buy in the grocery store every day. That's the sad thing that's happened to agriculture, is it's like there's been a big vacuum cleaner to suck up the profit to larger companies. What's happened to food products is they've become an income line on a profit sheet of a large corporation. It's a factory. It's a different thing. The animals are in a big barn. It's very efficient. You've got thousands of animals in a big building. Typically the farmer doesn't own those animals. He doesn't have any say so in what those animals are being fed. And the animals are confined to the space. They never leave the space. They never go outside. One of those chicken houses has over 40,000 chickens in it. That house flushes out those chickens every six weeks. That's an insane amount of chicken. Can a small farmer do that, I can't possibly, I mean, I couldn't feed a cruise ship for a week, you know? But if there were more of me, if there was more small farms in rural America instead of the factory farms, then yeah, we could feed a lot of people. And unfortunately, the meat industry, but all sectors of agribusiness are masters at propaganda and putting out that pretty picture of this is what agriculture looks like, you know, the uh, peaceful, lovely farm, when it's far from that. <sighs> you know, and it's that, as we struggle and, and, and try to make this work, you wonder, do you, I want my kids and grandkids to be able to enjoy this place, but it, is it really a viable, occupation and that's the big unknown because now we have so many issues with weather it's very chaotic climate change is a very real thing and how are we going to adapt to that but my biggest thing is is something 
that my, my son and my grandchildren can actually make a living doing. I don't know. That's, that's a real struggle for all farmers. There is no money in it. You can make more money doing anything else. You've got to love the land. You've got to love taking care of animals. And you've, you've got to really love feeding people. Because if it's about the money, you're going to be miserable. For the first time, we have legislation in Congress now that is actually looking at this consolidation issue and has a moratorium on new factory farms. So, you know, that's not going to pass this year or next, but I'm super excited that these issues are being discussed because to really fix a lot of the inequity problems in our society, we're going to have to deal with these issues. Sure, we should all vote with our fork. I think the most important thing is to vote with our vote and to be really uh, active on public policy issues that are going on. I think there has to be a big shift in how people view food and what the value of food really is. Every day I look around where we are and the beauty of the place and you still want to do it. It is worth it. Feeding people is worth it.